Welcome back to Trucks and Junk. Today on part two of the Junkyard Golf Cart Build. We go from this to this. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it. A rolling chassis. Once again. Okay, this is the plan that we're going to try to do on this build. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a square frame. And then we're going to put another piece of metal in the center of that frame for extra support. And then we're going to put two little leaves on the sides like this for the leaf springs of the golf cart to come down and sit on. That way we can still use the leaf springs that are originally from the golf cart. And not spend more money on different types of springs. Yeah, we can just use that the same way. type of springs and we'll drill holes in them to be able to use the bolts and go right through the spring right to the plate with using the leaf springs with no problem. And then we'll bring a bar down from here and a bar down from here, just like a trailer for a central pivot point on the frame. So we can move around and do all these cool adjustable thingies. With the leaf springs and then we'll put the engine plate on the square. That way the engine moves with the axle with no problem. And then we're going to put an axle right in front of there with the sprockets for the chain sprocket and the disc brake. So as long as we build it like this, everything should go pretty smoothly on the build. And then we're gonna put big old mud tires or whatever tires we decide to put. This is the metal that we're gonna be using today. It's C-channel and you guys do not have to use this by no means. This is really overkill for this build. But the main reason I'm using it is because this is to some old shelves that I had laying around from when I had the big shop and I no longer use them anymore. So I'm gonna repurpose them, recycle them, and use them for this build. It's overkill, I know that. You guys could literally get away with using one inch square tubing and do this exact same design and have no problems. Or even angle iron if that's what you got. I mean, literally anything you can build a metal square frame out of will work for this project. But I'm using this because it's free and I like free. All right, now I'm gonna go cut these to length. I'm gonna need, I've measured in between both leaf springs on the cart. So my back bar and my front bar both need to be 25 inches long. So I'm gonna go cut them to length. All right, now that I've cut those two bars at 25 inches, now I'm gonna cut these two bars at 22 inches because I've measured from the back of the tub to about a little bit past the leaf springs is a good space to be able to make this frame. So I'm just gonna cut these two side ones at 22 inches. got these cut to length we're going to have to notch out the ends of these on both ends and in the center for the other bars to come in and sit flat so I gotta mark these cut them out and let all this sit flat now if you're using angle iron or square tubing you can pretty much skip this step just butt weld everything but since I'm using C channel I'll have to notch all this out cut and notched all of your pieces to lay flat you're going to want to grind down all of the edges where you're going to be welded now if you don't have a welder the type of material that I'm using you probably want to go with C channel because you can actually drill holes in all of these and technically bolt this together but I prefer welds so we're going to be welding mine welds are more fun yeah and they throw sparks 
Yeah, and they're awesome. And the sparks yeah, fly here. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grind down all of the edges that you're going to be welding. If you're welding it together, this step really don't matter. But you want it to look like this once you've got it ground down. So you're going to have this side ground down where it's going to be welding and the flat surface weld ground down too. So you don't want to weld on, pow on powder coat because it's not going to stick. It's not going to hold up. Notched, cut, and ground down, ready for welds. You're going to want to use your speed squares and make sure everything is true and square. So if you got to move it around, adjust it, do what you got to do to make sure you have a good square solid frame before you start welding anything. Because once you start welding it, it is what it is, unless you cut apart your welds and redo everything. <laughs> Which that's a pain. Which is a pain in the butt, but it is possible to do. That's why you only want to tack it to start with, mock everything up, and then come back and do your final welds. After you've got everything mocked up, I'm ready to go. So now once everything's squared up, you can go ahead and start doing your weld. Now you're going to want to just start with tack welds and work your way around and just tack this thing together and get at it. Okay guys, after mocking this up in here, this is what I was talking about with spot welds in case you had to make some to, some changes to what you've done. So instead of doing the V shape, or the, not V shape, but the A shape that we were talking about from coming from here and here and then going to a central pivot point, I figured it'd probably be easier to just take out this center bar and just make it one solid bar from the back all the way back here all the way to the center point in the front make it look more like a trailer uh, either way it looks like a trailer this way this is this would just be more structural structurally sound to me to just have it all the way through the center to the center point instead of a weld here a weld here and no and i mean if the welds break and this drops or whatever whereas this would actually go under this and all the way to the front so even if the welds broke it would still be structurally sound yeah doubt the welds are going to break but you never know so that's what i meant by spot welds because now we can make that change without a whole lot of work Okay guys, I have some of this old white angle iron and that's what I'm going to use for my leaf spring perches because I'm going to drill holes in them and then I can bolt them to the frame. Okay, so now what I've decided to use for my central pivot point is a tie rod end. The main reason is because it can move in all directions smoothly. It's got a grease point to where you can service it 
and the odds of this thing wearing out when it's designed to be on a car turning all of its life is very minimal. And how I'm going to do that is I found a bolt that fits it thread wise, cut off the head and welded the bolt to the bottom side of the frame to where it's nice and sturdy on that end. And then what I'm going to do is screw this on to it just like that. And then I've drilled a hole in it right here to where I can fill this full of weld and this will never come off of here. And then we'll drill a hole in the frame of the golf cart right in the center to put this in and then we'll put a lug nut underneath of it and put a, the nut on it. And then this will be the perfect center pivot point for the frame. So now that we spotted everything together, this is what you're going to want it to look like. So now we got the center pivot point right here. You got the bar coming down the center of the frame, all one piece. And then you got these two pieces coming off. And then you got these two pieces here for the leaf springs to sit on. And then we slotted a hole here for that bolt to be able to come through into the center of the leaf spring. And then we can also, it's got some adjustment to it so we can make sure it's very straight and true because you want this thing to track down the road straight. You don't want the back of your golf cart going sideways, going down the road. But this is what we've got so far. Next, we're going to mock up an axle on it and see how that does. Okay, now before you drill your holes, you're going to want to make sure these are very even to the frame. So you're going to want to measure from the back of the pillar block or the back of the axle to the edge of the frame and make sure that it's the same distance on both sides. So this side's five and three quarter. And this side's a little far forward. So I'm gonna bring it back to five and three quarter, just like it is on that side. You got it in place, you're gonna borrow your son or whoever to hold that thing still when you start drilling. At least until you get the first two front bolts in. Once you get the holes drilled for the first two front bolts, you can put the two front bolts in and they can let go. I bolted down, see now the axle's not gonna move. Now we're gonna double check, make sure it didn't move while drilling. And it's at five and three quarter. And five and three quarter. So our axle is now straight to the frame, which is what you're gonna want. Let's go ahead and drill these two back holes now. They shouldn't move. Now at this point we have officially built an itty bitty trailer to go underneath this thing that we'd be able to mount a motor to, hook a chain to it, and roll down the road. So it's pretty cool. Alright, now we're gonna put this thing in.
we've got the center pivot point right here in the center of the frame. And like I said, we're gonna put a lug nut on the bottom and weld it to make that stronger for that to be able to go through and then put the nut on. And then we're going to, we have it bolted right here on the leaf springs on these perches. It goes through the perch, through the leaf springs and bolted right in the center. And these holes were already in the leaf springs so I just went ahead and used them. And then the same thing on that side. And then we got the axle mounted across. So, basically replacing the entire rear end with a live axle. And then we're going to mount the motor right here on this section of the frame. And then the chain going straight back to that. Now we're going to put the tires on. ready to accept the 125 cc engine. Push oh, that's beefy looking. Push you. Push you. Push you. Push you. Yeah. There's a ladder in your way, bro. Oh, yeah. All right, that's all you're going. <laughs> okay, guys, that's it for part two. Now, we built that engine plate big enough that all you have to do now is put a flat plate on that if you're deciding to go with the Predator 212. So all you would have to do is put a flat plate on that, drill your holes, hook up your chain, mount your engine, and you'll be good to go. But since we're going with this 125cc engine, it's going to be a little bit more complicated for us. So now on part three, we're going to be building engine mounts and figuring out a way to hook up this shifter. So you're not going to want to miss it. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you guys for watching, and you guys have an awesome day.